Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live there. In the background, running on our computer screen here, you're watching the interreligious dialogue uh, that Pope Francis has put together to bring together the three world's religions. Uh, Christianity, uh, well, not just three, actually, all the world's religions. It kind of reminds me of the passage we read yesterday uh, in regards to the, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth there. Uh, he is putting together everything you can imagine, the Zeeks, the, the Hindus, the, 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 the Buddhist, the Muslims, the Christians, and bringing about a peace in saying that it's all we're all one serving the same God. Now, I can't agree that we all are serving the same God. It's nice to have peace, but this is definitely not the way to do that. Now, tonight's broadcast here on Israeli News Live is a very interesting prophetic broadcast, and it's something that I think is going to floor you. We have entitled the broadcast, Vatican's Hostile Takeover of Jerusalem. And I think once you see this evening exactly what we have discovered, it will shock you to say the least. Uh, and what kind of started all of this was a, uh, it was a, uh, a, a article that we saw on Israel National News. This is the title of the article here on your screen, Clinton Mulled Secret Plan to Spark Palestinian Unrest. Now, don't let that surprise you. We already know from the former CIA Director of Operations, John Stockwell, that the United States participates in the overthrow of democratic governments. We've brought that out many times in our broadcast. And in this case here, it is played down as a peaceful civil uh, protest in order to get the, the, the Israel under political pressure again. But what I'm going to share with you is as I begin to dig and uncover what's really going on in the background and the timing of what happened here with uh, uh, former uh, Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton under uh, Barack Obama's administration there, you will see the link that the Vatican has, not to mention some of the Vatican's own claims and their own writings, even by uh, uh, Cardinal Turan. We'll be going into some of those things as well. This uh, article, like I said, came out today on Israel National News. It's published January 11, 2016. Clandestine plan was created in 2011 by her then advisors to push the Israeli government back to the negotiating table with the PA, that is the Palestinian Authority. Now, I've highlighted some very key points in this article here. It says here, for years, four years ago, then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton considered a plan created by her advisors to clandestinely foment unrest among Arabs in Judea and Samaria in order to push the Israeli government back to the negotiating table. The revelation arises from emails released as part of the investigation into the Democratic presidential frontrunner's private email server. By the way, it seems that they're working very hard to make sure that Hillary Clinton does not become the next president of the United States. I don't really think that she has a, a chance of making it anyway. The Washington Free Beacon reported Monday that December the 8th, 18th, 2011, email former U.S. Ambassador to Israel Thomas Pickering. By the way, Thomas Pickering has got a very interesting background himself, and uh, we're going to go on that in just a moment there. Uh, he was a former ambassador to Israel, as stated here. He is also former ambassador of Russia. He's been in the political arena ambassadorship most of the time for the United States government, all the way from Ronald Reagan down to President Bill Clinton. But even he was advising Hillary Clinton. First, let's see what he does, and then I'll share with you a little bit about his background as well. At any rate, though, he suggested that Clinton consider restarting peace negotiations by stirring up Palestinian demonstrations against Israel. Pickering described the idea as potential game changer in the region. Clinton reportedly asked that his email be printed. <laughs> Imagine that. By the way, uh, he is also the one that was on the investigation for the Benghazi uh, case against uh, Hillary Clinton there. So, you know, he's the kind of guy that's for her, even when he's inv investigating against her. 
What will change the situation is a major effort to use nonviolent protests and demonstrations to put peace back in the center of people's aspirations as well as their thoughts and use that to influence the political leadership. That's what Pickering wrote to Hillary Clinton. This is far from a sure thing, but far in my humble view from hopeless, he added, and suggested that protests be led by women because they are less likely to turn to violence. Well, that's because it's done in an email. As this former CIA director of operations, John Stockwell, puts it, the CIA gets involved and they do some serious unrest, to say the least. Uh, another interesting point in the article here, most of all the United States, in my view, cannot be seen to have stimulated, encouraged, or to be the power behind it for reasons you will understand better than anyone, he wrote, suggesting that the government enlists leftists on nonprofit groups in Israel. I believe third parties and a number of NGOs on both sides would help. The whole plan for destabilizing Israel with protest in order to get them to concede, to come to the negotiating table. The U.S. is only one entity involved in all of this. And by the way, another Clinton confidant, Anne-Marie Slaughter, who, by the way, uh, is the dean of the Princeton, or from 2002 to 2009, was a dean of the Jesuit University, uh, Princeton University, Woodrow Wilson School of Public of International Affairs. You'd be surprised the Vatican involvement in the lives of these different people here and why it may very well be the reasoning behind uh, some of these pre pressures upon uh, gov U.S. government officials to do certain things in Israel to, get the, to, 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 to destabilize the situation in order for the Vatican to get control of Jerusalem. Let me read to you what she suggested. Sent an email to Clinton staffers recommending that they undertake a pledge for Palestine campaign to convince U.S. millionaires and billionaires to don donate significant portions of their wealth to the Palestinian cause. Slaughter wrote in September 2010 email that the campaign would include a certain shame, shaming effect re, uh, uh, re regarding Israelis who would be building settlements in the face of the Pledge for Peace. It's just amazing. As in another previously leaked emails from Clinton's server, the ideas discussed are largely broached by Clinton's confidence, and she usually does not respond to them, either positive or negatively. However, the emails do appear to indicate the atmosphere that surrounds Clinton and the way the people closest to her regard the Jewish state. Very interesting to say the least there. Now, let me give you a little idea though. I, I mentioned to you about uh, uh, this man right here uh, who is uh, uh, the man that was advising Hillary Clinton, uh, Thomas Pickering, Thomas R. Pickering that is, who was advising her. This article here says, Obama's been Benghazi's investigator and Iran sympathizer. Uh, it was back on October the 23rd, 2012. Uh, but there was one thing that really caught my attention in this article, and I just wanted to bring this up about him. And he says here, and he had to insult the injury at press time Tuesday evening, the chairman of this new State Department panel, former Ambassador Thomas R. Pickering, was poised to participate in a panel discussion at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. on what role the faith community can play in fighting Islamoph Islamophobia. Now, the reason why I bring out this about Pickering is because we're already seeing that the U.S. Uh, government is getting involved in this man here recommending to uh, then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to do peaceful, quote unquote, peaceful demonstrations in Jerusalem, in uh, the different areas there in order to force Israel back to the negotiating table. And with that in mind, Mr. Uh, Thomas here, uh, Pickering, is do, speaking at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., what role the faith community can play in fighting Islamophobia. Well, if he's already looking at faith playing a role in that, he certainly is looking at how faith is playing a role in Israel, to say the very least. There's a lot of things that can be found in there uh, in, in regards to this as well. Now, as I mentioned to you, though, a moment ago, time 
is what's important in this article as well. Uh, this, according to, uh, let me back up where the date is on this here. They were talking about Hillary Clinton doing this uh, back in, uh, oh gosh, I did have the date. December 18th, 2011 uh, was when Thomas Pickering emailed her. Now, let me share with you then what was happening with the Vatican. Uh, let me go, let's go back one more time, look at the date. I don't want to forget that date there. December the 18th, 2011. All right, keep that date in mind. Now, on December the 15th of 2011, three days before he actually does this email, there was an article that was published by Guglielmo Miotti. It says the Vatican wants to lay its hands on Jerusalem. Now, we could say it's coincidence, but look at what happens here. And we're going to go deeper into some of these things here. All right. Peace negotiations in the Middle East must tackle the issue of the status of the holy sites of Jerusalem. Peace negotiations. Cardinal Jean-Louis Toron, head of the Vatican's Council for Interreligious Dialogue, he still is, declared several days ago in Rome, the Vatican's former minister asked to place some Israeli holy places under Vatican authority, alluding to the cynical of Mount Zion and the Garden of Gethsemane at the foot of the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. By the way, much of this has already been given to the Vatican. Not all of it, but some of it has already been done. The first site also houses what is referred to as King David's tomb. That's what the Vatican got. Watch what Turan says. There will not be peace if the question of the holy sites is not adequately resolved. Now, we've shared this with you before. That's Turan... He is the ambassador for the interreligious dialogue for the Vatican. And he states there will not be peace if the question of holy sites is not adequately resolved. He stated that again last year. And of course, the Palestinians, they have definitely gone to their intifada to bring about uh, or to force Israel to give them a state, which is what the Vatican wants. You'll see that in a moment. With the holy sites of the three religions, uh, excuse me, Tehran said, the part of Jerusalem within the walls with the holy sites of the three religions is humanity's heritage. The sacred and unique character of the area must be safeguarded, and it can only be done with a special internationally guaranteed statue. What's he trying to do? He's trying to get the deal that was brokered with Shimon Peres back in 1993 and 1994, where it was signed into to the agreement. He's trying to get a United Nations force put into Jerusalem, and Israel's not going along with it. So what do they do? They create unrest. He says there will not be peace if this is not answered. All right? Now, this, again, Gulio brings the article out on December the 15th. On December the 18th, what do we have? Thomas Pickering, a U.S. ambassador, to, he was a U.S. ambassador to Israel. Not at that time, but he has the connections. So now he's sending an email to Hillary Clinton to get them to start doing protest. Well then, what's going on here then? You have to ask yourself, the Israeli government and the Vatican are deadlocked in discussions over the status of the religious sites. Vatican officials are now reiterating their demand for control over the religious sites in the ancient and holy city founded by King David as the capital of ancient Israel, and now the capital of re-established Jewish state. Watch this. Danny Ayalon, Israel's deputy foreign minister, declared that Israel must consider giving the Vatican a greater role in operating the sites. In the last weeks, the Roman Catholic Church authorities increased their political initiatives for Catholic control over some sites in Jerusalem. Now, I didn't, before coming on the broadcast, I did not have enough time to go into Danny Ayalon's uh, background to see what type of ties he has with the Vatican, but no doubt there is definitely uh, ties there. Uh, we already know that they want the upper room. They did get this. They got the, uh, the, the, all of Mount Zion. Uh, is, a lot of that's been given to them. Let me bring out another thing in this article here, though, that Guglio wrote. He says, according to Obama, the old city of Jerusalem would be designated an international zone. That's interesting. Again, look at the time frame of events. The point is here, the Vatican controls Washington. And in return, they're causing Washington to put the pressure on Israel. 
and, and other uh, situations as well. And they caused the, the, the governments to bring about the unrest. Then we, we see CIA gets involved in these things, bringing about stirring up the people. If the peaceful protests don't work, they'll bring about the violent protest as well. All right. Notice also it says, any Vatican claim to seat, uh, uh, Gullia says, any claim to, to seat at the negotiating table is undermined by the complicity of the Vatican between 1948 and 1968. During the Jordanian occupation, Judaism's holiest sites were desecrated and Jews were barred from visiting these shrines. By the way, Gullio Miotti is not Jewish. He's a Christian man. I think he's Catholic, if I'm not mistaken. Gullio's been on Israeli News Live with us before and broadcast. Um, but notice what he writes here. The Jordanians built a hotel and a road through the Jewish cemetery on the Mount of Olives. Many people walk up that to this day. And they used the broken headstones to build the latrines in the construction of the Intercontinental Hotel. Lovely, isn't it? Very nice, very ungodly and evil, to say the least. And the Vatican said nothing about it. As was its practice during the Holocaust under Pope Pius XII, the Vatican, they then turned a deaf ear to these gross violations of Jewish human rights. Taking their loved ones, digging out their graves. You're literally, when you walk up that hill right through the cemetery, you're walking right over the cemetery itself. Thanks to the Jordanians. But the Vatican has a great... Uh, deal there with the Jordanians, to say the least there. All right, after we did this, I wanted to look in a little bit more about uh, Archbishop, at, at that time Archbishop, now he's uh, Cardinal uh, Jean-Louis Tarant. He's no longer an Archbishop, but he's a Cardinal. In 1998, this was published on catholicculture.org. On October 26th and 27th, presidents of delegates from several bishops conferences and unions of Episcopal conferences of Europe, the Americas, Africa, and Asia invited cardinals and the members of assemblies of Catholic ordinaries of the Holy Land met an invitation of H.B. Michael Sabah, Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, to reflect on the question of Jerusalem. This is what uh, uh, Jean Torrent said. It is Jerusalem that has brought us together. It is Jerusalem that urges us to look to the future. And Jerusalem yet again wishes to impart its secret, the secret which they that the which the prophet Ezekiel disclosed for all time. And the name of the city henceforth shall be the Lord is there. He's quoting from Ezekiel 48, verse 35. Now, this is why I say the Vatican has a is 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 has a hostile plan to take over Jerusalem. Not only do they have a hostile plan to take over Jerusalem, but the Vatican itself has implicated itself in a conspiracy that has biblically, has been prophetically spoken about them. In Jean Torin's own words here, when he quotes, Jerusalem yet again wishes to impart its secret, the secret which the prophet Ezekiel disclosed for all time, and the name of the city henceforth shall be, the Lord is there. Do you realize the prophetic implications of Jean Torin's statement here, Cardinal Torin's statement right there? He is quoting a verse that clearly, as we mentioned yesterday, from uh, Ezekiel 35. I shared with you in Ezekiel 35 here um, where the Vatican was there to take the two nations, Israel and the Palestinian state, and make it for themselves. Of course, as we see in the prophecy, they're burdened about Judea and Jerusalem. And this, this is the major issue going on right now. Watch what we see here. Ezekiel 35, verse 6, Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Surely thou hast hated thine own blood, therefore blood shall pursue thee. Now let me just see real quick there. Uh, okay. Verse 7, thus will I make Mount Sierra most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth through and him that returneth. 
and I will fill his mountains with his slain, thy hills and the valleys and the valley streams, and shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy cities shall not return, and you shall know that I am the Lord, because thou hast said, these two nations, that's because they've already divided it. The Vatican has actually been kind enough to divide the state of Israel and the state and made a state of Palestine officially. They've already said it. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it whereas the Lord was there. Whereas the Lord was there. Verse 10, Ezekiel 35. What does, what does Jean uh, Torrent say? Jerusalem yet again wishes to impart its secret. The secret which the prophet Ezekiel disclosed for all time. And the name of the city shall henceforth be the Lord is there. Using the divine name of, of, of the creator there and, and, and speaking what this name is here. So in Ezekiel 48, it's right here. Let me just share it with you here. And the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel. Three gates northward and the gate of Reuben. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong verse. It's the last verse. And it shall be 18,000 reeds round about, and the name of the city shall from that day shall be the Lord is there. And by the way, um, this is when, the, 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 what is it? The Vatican is wanting the old city. Now, what, what is happening? We still are dealing with Daniel's prophecy as well in Daniel chapter 11, uh, and that is verse, um, is it, what is that verse? I forget, verse 14, I believe it was. Yes, verse 14. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south, also the children of the violent among thy people. And as I told you before, and when you read this in Hebrew, it's the children uh, are the son, uvene parati amcha, the sons of the lawless of your people. Daniel's people, the Jews, okay? See, what are they trying to do? They're trying to establish the vision or marry the vision, but they shall stumble. And what vision are they trying to marry? They're trying to bring about the Vatican working with the lawless of Israel, like Shimon Perez, you know, Netanyahu's gone to the Vatican, but I still see him fighting. He's struggling to try to keep it out of the Vatican's hands, at least with what it appears on, on the inside. And from all the different investigation that I've done, he's really been fighting this. You know, there's a lot of people try to say, well, he's a Jesuit, he's, that, he's everything. Let me tell you something. He has been trying to fight the Vatican takeover of Jerusalem. And that's through some very serious uh, investigative work that we have been doing there. But clearly... They're trying to fulfill prophecy. And Jean Taran is actually quoted it. You're seeing another prophecy clearly from the Vatican's own mouth. All right, now let's look what else he says. This cause of the holy city has long been a center of the Holy See's concerns. This is what Jean Taran says. And one of its top priorities for international action. Ever since the Jerusalem question existed. The Jerusalem question, he also goes on to state here, from the references to the historical events, particularly those of the last 50 years, there emerges what is commonly referred to as the political dimension of Jerusalem in a complex of situations which have risen regarding territorial control and the actions carried out to gain such control. The concern expressed in the interventions of the popes and in other documents of the Holy See could not and cannot overlook this aspect. It is ever present. First, in order to prevent the holy city becoming a battlefield and later to ensure that it does not become. The situation today has been brought about and is maintained by force. The holy see has spoken out on this and will continue to speak out clearly without mincing words and consistently adhering to the position of the majority within the international community as expressed above all the pertinent United Nations resolutions since 1967. And notice what it says here in the green. A part of the city has been occupied militarily most of the holy places. Speaking about Israel, he's condemning Israel. Of three monotheistic religions, East Jerusalem is illegally occupied. 
That's the Vatican's official stance. He is the cardinal that announces the Pope. He is the cardinal for interreligious inter dialogue. Pope Francis has already announced a Palestinian state. They've already got it gone before the United Nations. It's been voted unanimously. And the Vatican, as of uh, January the 1st there, recognized the political, um, they did the political ties with a Palestinian state. It's a done deal. Everybody that's looking for a two-state solution, your two states has already been done. It's finished. It's over. Okay? Now, we've seen, according to Daniel's prophecy in chapter 11, that there would be a, uh, not, not speaking of a covenant, but there would be a, a, a league made with Israel. That league was made with the Jewish Congress. The Jewish Congress is not the Knesset. Keep that in mind. The Jewish Congress is an international body of Jewish rabbis who have signed the document recognizing an, an equality between and a mutual relationship between the Vatican and uh, the, Israel's rabbis. Fourteen of those rabbis are Israeli Orthodox rabbis. Now, there are many, many rabbis, I will say, that is against this, this whole plan. And they should be, because God clearly told Moses, do not make any covenants with them. But the people are making it anyway. In the blue, it is therefore wrong to claim that the Holy See is only interested in religious aspects or aspects of the city and overlooks the political and territorial aspects. The Holy See is indeed interested in this aspect and has the right and duty to be. You don't think that they don't mince some politics? Sure they do. You don't think that the Vatican isn't pushing for what's going on? Now the whole point is in all this is that uh, Cardinal Turan, and th there's many things that, are, that he's stated in here, but Cardinal Turan and, and the things that happened with Clinton back when she was uh, Secretary of State under President Barack Obama is clearly showing that there is a tie between the Vatican's role and the pressure that is put, no doubt, I've not found the, the uh, you know, it's hard to find the key people that are actually doing the pressure, but I, I'm sure if we can do some research on, on these cardinals and the bishops of the United States, we'll find the links where the pressure is being put on politicians that, that make the decisions, that have the authority to get involved with the CIA, the FBI, or whatever the case may be, and cause civil unrest in the state of Israel. But the important thing is, friends, prophecies are being fulfilled as this, be, as this is being done. We're living in the hour your two witnesses are going to come on the scene. The Antichrist will rise up, and the two witnesses will come on the scene. I know there's a lot of talk about Barack Obama right now being the head of uh, the United Nations, We've known this now for, for a couple of years that, he's gonna, that he was planning on doing this. This is actually not new news. This came out quite a bit. We know that he would do it. I expect fully that he will. And I do believe that Barack Obama and the Pope of Rome will end up working hand in hand. Now, will there be another Pope? Possibly so. But even if there's not, your Antichrist sits in the Vatican. And by the way, I want to thank the sister that sent me uh, where the document was. It was in the, the Apocalypse of Thomas that speaks about that king of the south that would bankrupt. He would actually bankrupt the Roman soldiers. Friends, we are living in a precarious time. Be in prayer. Make sure that you know that Yeshua is your own Savior. I really cannot encourage that enough. Recognize him as your savior and stand with this news broadcast. We need your support. We thank those of you that have contributed since yesterday. Uh, we have a lot of serious things that are going on. We have a very important uh, news trip that we are going to be making uh, later this month that I know is going to bless your heart tremendously. But we need your help in making this possible. You can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. You find that at the end of this broadcast on our website. Or you'll also see at the end of the broadcast our mailing address in Europe if you want to contribute in that manner as well. IsraelReturns.com also has our address there if you're looking there and you can give on either website. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.